looking at the penetration, so most all of them, essentially, with the exception of uh, some two of the newer ones, there's BIBB 091, uh, and there's also oral, uh, oral abrutinib. We don't know if they crossed the blood-brain barrier quite yet, but evabrutinib, which has probably the most information published on so far, tolabrutinib, as well as fenabrutinib, uh, sorry, not fenabrutinib, but um, uh, remabrutinib, they all cross the blood-brain barrier. And my apologies as well, actually, uh, fenabrutinib is the one that we don't know yet if it actually crosses. Uh, but essentially, we're all in phase three studies with many of these. Uh, we use them in all subtypes of MS, which is really exciting. Like I said, you can use it in the inflammatory and the neurogenitive components. And really, you know, with uh, regards to, uh, say, the safety profile of these medications, a lot of them are unknown quite yet because they're still kind of in early trials. But say the one that we have the most information on will be Everbrutinib and Tolabrutinib. And both of those really, there's not a whole lot of serious adverse side effects that we've seen so far, uh, except for maybe some common cold or flu symptoms uh, and maybe an elevate, elevated LFTs. So going forward, of course, that gets approved for indications like relapsing or bidding or secondary progressive, then we would just you know kind of do three-monthly or six-monthly uh, LFT monitoring. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, it's, they seem so far uh, very promising and very safe, uh, which is very, which is exciting because I mean some of the more high efficacy medications, which these are showing kind of similar results to the anti CD twenty therapies, uh, they have a much better safety profile uh, than uh, say something like alamtuzumab, uh, for example. The very exciting stuff uh, that I wanted to talk about was with regards more so to uh, the ones that we know the most about would be Everbrutinib and Tolabrutinib. So we have a big decrease in MRI T1 enhancing lesions, which is very exciting. So that's a big indication for an actual relapse. Now, some of them could be technically clinically silent, but it reduces radiological disease. And that translates, of course, down to actual clinical relapses. Uh, it reduces, all of them have been shown to reduce MS confirmed relapses, uh, you know, which is a clinician confirmed. And uh, we also have uh, outcomes that we look at, like uh, the uh, MSFC, which is the composite score for disability, and of course, uh, EDSS or Delta EDSS. So we're looking at you know six month and 12 month changes to the expanded disability status scale. And what we see there is that there is quite a big uh, uh, decrease uh, in the level of Delta EDSS when uh, we deliver uh, Burton tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Uh, I think that's kind of the major stuff. I don't know if there's anything else, but basically all the composite endpoints for many of these clinical trials, you know, whether it's the evolution RMS trials uh, or whether it's the, uh, uh, you know, say the Perseus trial or Hercules or the Gemini one and two, uh, or whether we actually, you know, say, look at um, the Fenhans or the Fentrepid studies with Fen and Brutinib, uh, many of these endpoints, whether they're the primary or the secondary, they are drastically reduced uh, when we compare it to placebo or even when we compare it to uh, uh, other medications that are used in these trials.